Hello and welcome to the fourth of four films about stage three calculations. Don't get too excited thinking that these, this is the last film you're ever going to see about calculations. Yes, there are more, um, but this will hopefully um, kind of finish up for semester one. Um, as we said before, percentage purity problems are just normal mole calculations, but with a few more steps. Um, I hopefully showed you the importance of brilliant artwork in the last film. Um, this one is a little bit more complicated, so it's going to um, require even more artistic talent on my part um, as we try to visualize the processes that are taking place. So here we go. Let's have a look at our calculation and let's try and imagine what's going on. Okay. Once again, we have got a substance whose purity we're not sure of. Okay, now I always kind of represent this as a pie with a slice, um, but uh, just so that we don't get um, you know, bored of the repetition, let's imagine this as a pile of stuff on a plate, okay, and part of it is pure and part of it isn't, okay. So um, it says here that we tip this stuff into a beaker um, that had 25 milliliters of acid in it. Okay, and some of that acid would have reacted with the pure substance and some of it would have been left over. So some reacted and some remained. Okay, and then after we did this reaction, we added sodium hydroxide. Okay, and why did we do that? Well, because the unreacted acid, that is the one that remained, that reacted with this sodium hydroxide. Okay, so by hopefully knowing how much sodium hydroxide we had, we'll be able to relate that to the number of moles of acid that we had. And if we know the total number of moles of acid that we had here, then we can take away the amount that remained from that to find the amount that reacted. So then we'll know the number of moles that reacted, and then we'll know the number of moles of calcium carbonate. That were in the marble chips. Okay, so it's quite a few steps, and the reason a lot of people get these calculations wrong is because they put the numbers in the wrong places. And I think if you're one of those people who does get them wrong, a picture can help you put the numbers in the right places. I'm not suggesting that you have to draw a picture, but it can sometimes make it a little bit simpler. Okay, so here we go. Let's find out um, what all these numbers are. Well, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that equals N equals C times V, right? So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide uh, is, well, that's just 1 times 0.014, right? 1 times 0.014. And uh, let's see, that's 0.014. Okay, so we've got 0.014 moles of sodium hydroxide. Yeah? That is reacting with what? Well, it's reacting with the hydrochloric acid that remained in here. So we're getting this reaction, HCl plus NaOH, and that they are forming sodium chloride and water. Why is that important? Well, because I can see here that it's a one-to-one -one reaction. So that tells me what? Well, that tells me that the number of moles of acid that remained is the same as that. Okay, it's 0.014 moles. Now I'm trying to find the number of moles of acid that reacted. So to find that, I've got to know the total number so that I can subtract this from it. So the total number is C times V. Okay, and that equals the concentration, 1.3, and this time times the volume, which is 0.025. Okay, because it's got to be in litres. What does that equal? That equals, where have I put it, uh, 0.0325. Okay, why is that good to know? Well, we now know how much acid there was to begin with and how much there was at the end. So the difference between those two is how much reacted. And that equals 0 0.0325 minus 0 0.014. Okay, and that equals 0 0.0185. 0.0185. I wrote it down just in case I had a bit of a uh, mental arithmetic meltdown. Okay, so there it is. There's our number of moles of acid 
What acid? That is the acid that reacted with the calcium carbonate from the marble chips. What reaction does that involve? Well, that's hydrochloric acid reacting with calcium carbonate, and that's producing calcium chloride and H2O and CO2. Okay, but that's not a balanced equation. Now it is. Okay, and now we can see that there's two moles of HCl to every one mole of calcium carbonate. Why is that good to know? Well, because I know how much hydrochloric acid reacted with the calcium carbonate, and now I can write an expression for the number of moles of calcium carbonate, and that equals half the number of moles of acid. I know that the number of moles of acid was 0.0185, so that's a half of 0.0185, and that is point. Oh, have I written that down? Yes, that's 9.25 times 10 to the minus 3. What's the mass of calcium carbonate? Because remember, I'm trying to find a percentage by mass. So the mass of calcium carbonate, well, that's given by number of moles times big M, and that is 9.25 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 100.09. Okay, and that is equal to... Uh, 5.6, no, wrong piece of paper, 0.926 grams. All right. Now, the last bit is lovely and easy. I'm going to put it up here, um, 0.926 grams over, how much did we have to start with? One gram. And hopefully you can do that in your head. That's 92.6%. So there's our answer. That's the percentage purity of our substance. Now notice, look, compared to the last film, we had a few more steps, but even someone with my limited artistic ability was able to illustrate those steps. I suppose even if, um, even if you don't need to draw this diagram, quite a nice thing about it is it allows you to show working in a quite a sort of logical, clearly set out way because you can show the examiner that you've calculated the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, you've written an equation for that reaction, you've then said right there for the number of moles and, and so on and so forth. So you can show where all the numbers fit in if you want. Okay? Once again, you don't have to draw these diagrams. If you find these calculations um, manageable without diagrams, that's absolutely fine. But to give yourself the best chance of doing well at these things, diagrams or not, I'd suggest that certainly the best thing to do is to practice and to get some help if you're finding it hard.